your pastry, bakery, and quality food, CK Restaurant is the only place to be. We do catering for birthdays, weddings, and all related services. We have all kinds of local foods, American, European, and even beyond. Come and have a taste of our local juice, ebe and other services. At CK Restaurant, customer satisfaction is our priority. of owning your dream homes. EJ Investment is here for you. Secure our quality bungalows with two, three, or four bedrooms or our story building, three or four to five bedrooms at very affordable prices with flexible payment plans at our Sanyang Seaview Estate where you can enjoy the cool breeze with modern infrastructure such as the roads, covered drainage system, modern electrification with street lights, gated entrance with security posts, and social amenities such as gas station, shopping mall, medical clinic, park, schools, children daycare, and a lot more. Our dedicated team of professionals will keep the estate clean at all times, provide security and patrol team within the estate premises, install latest technologies such as CCTV, Wi-Fi, home network installation, solar panel, and power backup system. Also, check out for our additional home facilities and interior design service, such as premium tiling, wall plaster, home landscape, fingerprint home lock, and a lot more. Visit our office at Senegambia Kololi Highway and get a free site visit tour or contact us on 4464-838. WhatsApp us on 3259-220 or you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram on EJ Investments. EJ Investments, we are first in properties. Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic Microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic Microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832151 or visit Yona Head Office at Tipa Garage, Bakote or visit any Yona branch located countrywide near you. gathered here so that we can update you or we can first of all give you an account of what transpired during the voter registration 
exercise. And of course, we culminate by giving you an update of the intending or the impending presidential elections of 4th December. As we are gathered as a family, uh, before we do anything, I would want us to know, to sort of introduce ourselves so that we know um, who is who in this um, lovely family. So I'll, I'll first of all let the members of the high table to introduce themselves, and then the rest of us will introduce ourselves so that at least we know who is who so that we can have a very, very amicable uh, discussion. First of all, let me express our sincere appreciation and gratitude for all of you to be here, especially our donor partners like the EU, UNDP, AU, IFES. They are really key in the electoral process. They've been supporting us for a long time and they'll continue doing, doing so. But for you from the media and the CSOs, you have a very key role to play in this electoral process. As you all know, electoral starts with voting. And to vote, you must have a voter's card. And this exercise will be completed in July. And now we are going to the process of updating all, the, all those registers in different areas. And um, the MC here, the Vice Chairman, will put you through the whole process and the uh, CEO will give you also copies of those registered and where they set an age limit as well. What I also tell the people outside the country, as the Vice Chairman of Econec, Econ is that some of these African countries should emulate the electoral process of the Gambia. Because here, we meet you where you live and register you to have a voter's card and it's delivered to you free of charge on the spot. Unlike other countries where it takes days or weeks before you get that. So here is free of charge on the spot. And we do allow parties to send agents in all the election centers so that they will know how it's going on and who's being registered. And if there is any complaint, they have the right to complain. And following that, as you all know, the list of all those registered in that particular polling station, registration center, is posted for anyone with any query or complaint to go before the revising court to lay that complaint. And um, I'm happy to say that so far throughout the country, we have not one single complaint from any of these registration centers. So that, that program is now over. But later on, we'll make sure that all those registered in each of these regional centers are distributed throughout the country, particularly to parties. Thereafter, we have the election day. And this time is for December, for the elections. And on that day, we invite party agents to be present throughout the process, where from the beginning to the end, each party is allowed to send an agent to witness every process of the voting system. As you know, we, see, we are still using these ballot drums. So the, to, be, to start with, we make sure that agents are there. When the ballot drums are open, empty, seal in their presence, and they take the seal number. And after voting, before counting, those party agents and the IC officials will agree how many people have voted. Because once you come to vote, you announce your name, 
and a stick because all the body agents are given a list of those who are to vote in that particular area. Because here you vote by register. Unless you have an election where you know the whole country is one constituency, those unofficial duties like security and the IC personnel are given permission to vote where they are posted. So at the end of the polling, they all agree how many people have voted before the water drums are brought and emptied. And when they count it, the tallies. And these party agents will also sign the record sheet of that polling agent, polling station, so that there will be no confusion at all. That's why we always pride ourselves that no person or authority can influence the voting system, the voting pattern of the IAC. Because it's done from the beginning to the end in the presence of all parties by the agents. And they sign the resources. Then they communicate to their respective offices. And that's why they always know the result before I, as the running officer, will know. Because immediately voting ends at 5 o'clock, it's counted, and they record their phone, their village offices for them to do the uh, cal 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 calculations. But then, first, the IC, where you have three, four, or five uh, voting centers in one area, they, are, they do the co collision. And from there, it goes to the regional office to, for them to all do the, the collision for the whole region before it gets back to me. So I'm the last to know. And the party agents, the party reps, will have done their work and know who's won and who's lost. So it's very transparent, accurate, and fair. But you now know that we have so many parties, and the CEO will go through that. And unlike the last elections, there were only three contestants. And now, with these multiple parties, 18 of them presently, and some being processed, plus independent aspirants, we expect so many contestants. And using these archaic ballot drums, which will cost the IEC over $2 million per candidate just for the drums, is something that we really have to review. And inshallah, this election is the last time we are going to use these ballot drums. As I always say, we are not the dumbest country in the whole world. Because this was introduced when the size of it was very low. But now, the whole world have gone to paper ballot, and we are the only one left. It's expensive, logistically it's a nightmare, and the ballot paper should be introduced as soon as possible. And on that note, I just say a big thank you for being here. And feel free to ask any question you need to ask. But you are a key partner in the electoral process. Because for us at the IEC, no matter what people write about us, what they say about us, particularly about me, I just say, as far as we are concerned, no authority or person can derail the system we, we adopt. That's why it's going to be transparent, free, and fair. And there's no way anybody can influence the results of the elections. So whatever they have to write or say, tell them, as far as we are concerned, we do it accurately, transparently, and fairly. And on that note, I say a big welcome once more, and feel free to ask whatever you want to ask, please. Thank you very much, Vice. Thank you very much, uh, Vice Chairman, and who is also the uh, master of ceremony for this uh, monthly consultative forum with the, uh, between the IAC, civil society, and the media. Uh, 
Chairman, Independent Electoral Commission, Commission members, our partners, stakeholders from the media, our partners from the civil society organization, our colleagues from the African Union, United Nations Development Program, our technical partner from IFES, and a guest from USAID Dakar office. Good afternoon. This afternoon, my task is to present to you uh, on the close of the voter registration 2021 and to give an update on the presidential election 2021. You may recall that the Independent Electoral Commission uh, conducted a general voter registration from the 29th of May to the 11th of July 2021. This was conducted to update and upgrade the, uh, the register of voters of the Gambia to bring it uh, to up to date and to make it as accurate as possible. During this period of 44 days, the IEC registered eligible Gambians as voters for the forthcoming electoral cycle. At the end of the field registration, uh, according to law, we were, uh, the IEC was mandated to publish the provisional list of voters for 10 days and to open for a period of 14 days for the receipt of objections and appeal on the provisional list. We, was, we wish to inform you that at the close of the receipt of appeals and objections, like the chairman has earlier reported or said, there was no single <coughs> objection or appeal received on this provisional voters register countrywide. As a result, and following the verification and correction on the provisional list, we wish to inform you today that the final number of registered voters for the Gambia today stands at 962,157 voters. Of this, 43.3% are male voters and 56.7 are female voters. And of, with this number of, uh, total number of registered voters, totaling to 962,157 voters, give us a total number of polling stations from 1,422 in 2016 to today 1,554 polling stations. So that being the case, since there is no objection, no appeal, and the registration was concluded and, concluded, and now we have the total number of voters, our regional offices have been instructed to get to the appointed revising magistrate court, revising magistrate in their regions to sign the provisional voters register that will, come to, that will become the voter register of the Gambia. And that being the case, the, office, uh, the IEC has officially declared the voter registration 2021 closed since there was no appeal and objection. This thing is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, before I move on to the next one, next topic, on the, on, uh, that is the update on the presidential election, I wish to report to you that the total number of registered political parties as at today, the fourth the 14th of September, 2021, stands at 18 registered political parties. 18 registered political parties. We also have four applications in the process to be registered as political parties. And we also note from you as our partner, the media, the independent aspirant who has uh, appeared in your media houses for interviews or uh, commentary and uh, visits in our offices to express their intention. Altogether put, we have in our record 12 independent aspirants for the presidential election. Moving on to the presidential election 2021. Following the close of the registration, voter registration 2021, the IEC has activated the presidential election 2021 
even though the IEC has already published the electoral calendar in 2020, July 2020, the IEC further went further, the IEC went further to produce and publish the election notice which bears uh, certain uh, dates of the election. And also put in the gasset the presidential election 2021 to formalize it. As it stands, the gasset has been published, in the, uh, the notice has been published in the gasset, and, and a press release was issued to that effect. And the date in that uh, electoral schedule is by the 30th of this month, that's 30th of the, uh, September, Nomination papers will be issued to aspirants, candidates, and political parties. 30 days later, that is the 30th October to the 5th of November, nomination papers will be received from intending or, or interested candidates at the IEC election house. I must say here, before I, went, before I go further, that for presidential elections, anything regarding nomination will is done at the IEC election house, not at the regional offices. All information of candidates will be at the election house, not at the regional offices. So we have from the 30th, to the, uh, from the 30th of October to the 5th of November, seven days of nomination period. Why seven days, not one day? Because we are, of, we are of the information that we have many political registered political parties. We have also many interested independent aspirant. And we cannot have a day or two for this then. On a certain day of nomination, parties will come together and they may class. This is why I spread the nomination period uh, to seven days. And on each day, certain number of political parties or candidates will be given a certain day and a certain period so that they can go out to the election house peacefully and submit their nomination papers and go back peacefully without any meeting or classes between supporters of parties. On the 6th of November, the, the IEC will publish the nomination papers of candidates who have filed in their papers for public scrutiny between the hours of 8 in the morning and 12 noon. On the 7th to the 8th of November, the IEC will sit with representative of political parties and candidates nominated to finalize and to compile and finalize a, co a composite campaign itinerary. Because we know we will have a lot of candidates and we cannot just allow each and every candidate to go anyhow, anywhere, anytime. We will sit and compile a composite campaign itinerary where in that program we will give each, we will give each political party or candidate a specific date, specific time, and for specific area to avoid classes or meeting of uh, political candidates or parties. This will be for a period of from the nine, the, uh, the official campaign period for this election will be from the 9th of November to the 2nd of December, 24 campaign days. During this period, Candidates uh, nominated will be going out and about the country to converse for votes. On the 3rd of December, the IC has declared cool it of day, when we do not expect any candidate to campaign or converse for vote publicly in any public gathering. On the 4th December will be the polling of voting day for the presidential election 2021. Having said that, before I conclude my presentation, we also, the IC has also noted with keen interest that certain uh, individuals claiming to participate in voter education for these uh, coming elections, including uh, coming from the civil society, media houses, to come together to the IEC so that we can uh, sit around the table and synergize our efforts. Because we cannot let all everyone to be going on its or her own way, doing the, uh, one and the same thing. We want all of you who are interested in voter education to please come forward so that we can sit and strategize how to do voter education. We are not restricting anybody, but there should be regulation. We should regulate the process of voter education, and more so 
when you do not, you are not the electoral umpire or the electoral administration. So we are calling on all interested individuals to come to the IEC who, uh, who are interested in voter education so that we can choose a day to sit together and synergize. Because we have already gotten a survey from a technical partner that uh, shows us where voter education is lacking and which sector of voter education is lacking. It's better that can be used to help all of us in our voter education drive. Furthermore, uh, we wish to inform you that election observation is also open. Interested uh, CSOs, media houses, to cover the electoral process should do so now. Failure which you will not be invited again to our electoral processes uh, programs. Having said that, I wish to thank you very much. Have a good day. Now we will invite comments, questions, if you have any. Maybe what you do is, um, if you want to ask a question or make a comment, you raise your hand and introduce yourself. So we'll have the mic going around. Like I said earlier, that the IEC has drawn the curtain on the voter registration by taking the list to the uh, revised magistrate for signature. As we speak, our regional offices are on their way to the magistrate for signature of this uh, provisional list to be, to be affirmed and become the official register for the electoral process. Uh, the issue of the double registration, uh, the commission has decided that uh, they keep the latest card and delete all other cards, like it did in 2016. Because some of the issues that we have said, uh, realized that when we uh, do the adjudication and the verification, we have realized that some of those cards are not if you re double register, so they are technical issues because of, during the training and during the testing in the morning when people, our team started registering, they normally test and those things keep on appearing. Anything you put in the system, you will keep it there. And during the, this is why when we, at the end of the registration, we announce that whatever we announce is provisional because we wanted to give you information at the time. Now that we have given you the final, this is the final with no double registration. Having said that, on the issue of uh, 18 political parties, yes, 18 political parties registered as of today. And let me just uh, clarify these things. You are uh, uh, interchanging two different issues. Registration is different from nomination of candidate. Registration of political party is different from nomination of candidate. Registration of political parties is registering a group of individuals coming together to register at a, a, an institution to become a political party to partake in the electoral process of the Gambia. Nomination of candidate is an individual coming to put forward his candidature or candidacy before the electoral commission to contest an election. They have different criteria. The criteria for registering a, nomin uh, for registering a political party is you must have 10,000 registered voters who support your, 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 your party registration and at least 1,000 from each administrative region. And we have seven administrative regions. You can have over 50,000 from any administrative region, but if you have less than 1,000 from an administrative region, you will not be entitled to be registered. And there is no law in the registration of political parties law that say, if Mr. Nelson support party A, uh, if Mr. Nelson signed for party A, Mr. Nelson cannot sign for party B. And the analogy I'm going to give you, we have seen the new parties coming up. Most of them were executive members of the older parties. So let's move that from, let's move from the registration to go to the nomination. For the nomination of candidate, there is a law that say you cannot nominate more than two candidates in an election. This, the IEC is very concerned about it. So this is why when we see in the media, people are saying that, that uh, Banu has less than 20,000 and we have over 18,000. Doesn't mean there is no nomination of 18 candidates from Banjo, but there is registration of over eight, about 18 political parties in the Gambia. I think I'm clear. Thank you. I'm asking when would the revised code start their sitting? Okay, any other question? We'll take the third one before I, I respond. Good afternoon. My name is Alan Bississi. Uh, in reference to the UNDP report, uh, IT basically had a funding gap of $1.6 million. $1.6 million. And already the finance ministry already informed that the monies will be disbursed, provided that IC presented comprehensive disbursement plans. So I wanted to know if there is 
any effort or sort of an update uh, with regards to the application of those funds. Okay, thank you. Let me take the three before we go to the next uh, batch of questions. Uh, regarding election observation, I think I mean when. It, okay, sorry, it was offer. Uh, on the election observation, I think I said it in my presentation that uh, invitations are open for election observation. And I said, please do send in your, uh, your, uh, your application so that you will be accredited to, to observe the electoral process. And in, uh, in election observation, you have two types. You have the LTO called the long-term observation and the short-term observation. So it's left to you to decide which one do you go in for. But we are telling you that uh, invitation has been open, and as media and civil society organization, you are encouraged to uh, apply for this uh, observation to be granted to you. Otherwise, in one of the events or sometime in the future, you may not be allowed if you are not accredited. So please uh, take note of the uh, uh, application of all the invitation. On the issue of the revising courts, I also uh, dealt with this during my presentation. And I said, after the field registration, uh, the IEC compiled the provisional voters list. And this was published for 10 days in the registration centers. And there was 14 days set aside from the, 14, from the 16th of uh, August to the 29th of August for the receipt of uh, objections and appeal. And there was none received from uh, any office in, of the IEC. And according to the uh, Elections uh, uh, Act, Section 22 to Section uh, 30 something, I can't remember, 33 rather, thank you. Uh, uh, for you want to object, you have to go and go to the IEC regional office and collect, pick a form and fill. Then the IEC will notify the revising court to start sitting. And, but this, this, not, this did not happen, then there is no revising court. Revising courts are not going to sit. To, what they are doing now is to sign, because there was no case brought before them. So no revising court will, there will be no revising court sitting, per se. Thank you. Uh, let me just say, uh, differentiate the two. You have an elections project, and you have the IEC election budget. The election project is what UNDP has reported on, not on the IEC budget. And if, that, if you are talking on the, yes, yes chairman. Yes. If you want, yes, yes. If you want to talk on the UNDP election project gap, the UNDP will be happy to respond to that. But if you want to talk about the election uh, budget, I can tell you that the government of the Gambia is, has approved what we have budgeted for this election, and its been, funds are being released. Thank you. Um, the percentage of the registered voters on the list you gave us there is not provided. You read it on your statement, but. It escaped. I don't know if the percentage is there for the percentage of male registered voters and female registered voters on the list here. Thank you. Can I answer? Oh, some. I'm just. I have not seen because of these lights. Yes. Uh, but it's all right, it's okay, I'll manage. Hmm? Um, okay, my name is Nelson Mada from Korea newspaper. Um, I have a little question, first one I think already asked, that is with regards to the double registration. I just want to uh, know whether it is legal for the IEC to just export people's way who have registered uh, two times, like removing their post and then giving the last. It is legal. Should it be done by the court or by the IEC? Uh, the second question is with regards to the, uh, the signing of the final list. Um, uh, uh, the judicial secretary told us that uh, the magistrate should be sitting for 60 days, uh, waiting for people to come and make their complaints or uh, make their appeals. But uh, uh, the IEC said it's for 14 days. So we want to know whether the list has been signed by the magistrate as of now. Or come again, I don't hear you that part of the, the last... I feel like the statistic, the appeal. Magistrate, did you say the secretary told us that the sitting for 60 days waiting for the appeal? We also have complaints to come. Uh, and then the IEC state officially should be for 14 days. And after the 14 days, they will close. 
So I went to where the Brits, where they have already signed the, the list for the 2021 election. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the question on the uh, official campaign period and party's campaign in, uh, now. Uh, I think in my presentation, I, uh, when I say campaign, I said official, I classify it, I describe it, I say official campaign. Official campaign is the period in which, during which the IAC is in charge of issuing permits or approving uh, uh, campaign programs for candidates. But before the official uh, uh, period, the IAC is not in charge, it's the office of the Inspector General because they are in charge of the public order. Mm -hmm. So any campaigning done by any political party or, can, or whatever, it is not approved or, or permitted by the IAC, but probably the office of the Inspector General. It is not official campaign as classified on the IEC. We, our official campaign will start from the 9th to the 2nd, 9th of November to the 2nd of uh, December 2021. That is the time when we will be in charge and the I, IGP will not be issuing permits, but the IEC will be issuing office, uh, uh, permits to campaign. On the issue of uh, uh, percentages, yes, uh, I will want to uh, go over it with you. You receive a document called uh, uh, press release, am I right? Are we together? You receive a document call uh, where you have uh, regions, uh, code, registered voters, male and females. Huh? So if you do the arithmetic, it just gives you that uh, 4357. Huh? You also, we have you also been very kind with information this time to give you the, the, uh, the age brackets, the age brackets. Like where you have the code, the re uh, registered voter, 18 to 25, how many people are registered for each of the regions, and the percentage, 26 to 35 for each region and their percentages, the 36 to 45 for each region and their percentages, and it goes up to the plus 65. And you also have a list called constituency totals. All the constituencies of the Gambia, how many people are registered there, of the registrant, how many of the, of the, uh, of the voter registered there, how many of them are males, how many of them are females, and their percentages. So I think uh, that's just a matter of taking the total of the male against the total number by the female, you have the percentage. So that's simple arithmetic. Uh, on the issue, somebody talk about, I missed that point. Nelson, you want to come back? Yes, I was talking about the legality of the The law has mandated the IC to do any correction on any list of voters. And I, like I earlier said, some of those double registrations were technical errors on our part because of, during our training, we trained over 1,000 people and they all had the opportunity to do the test. We just want, we, we wanted to be very transparent by telling you that when we do our own test, of double registration, this is what the, uh, the system was able to pick. If I had uh, registered during the training when I was trained, my name is there. And when we send our officers, we advise them early in the morning to do a, a, a test, and it's all captured. And again, if your voter's card is wrong, you will better bring it to the IEC. Instead of Nelson Mane, you have Nelson Mandela. You have the right to come and you have the right to correct it. So these are the issues. Not about right, but it's about correction. You understand? Uh, signing. Uh, I will just refer you to the law. What I know is we receive appeals and objections, send it to the revising courts. That's what I can tell you. And we do not receive any appeal. We do not receive any objection. This is why we do not send anything to the revising magistrate. What is said by somebody, I don't know, honestly. Thank you. Yes, uh, on the issue of voters' card uh, being lost, we employ, uh, we enter, uh, all governments not to lose uh, their voters' card not uh, got their voter's card damaged or mutilated before the election. Remember, the, uh, the country has spent so much to give that voter's card free of charge. Uh, losing it uh, just um, uh, at this time uh, is just not the best for the country. And definitely, uh, the commission will have to sit and decide uh, whether they will do a replacement of voter's card, for, uh, a replacement of voting card for people who have lost their cards or damaged or mutilated. But what I can advise here is, uh, please keep your cards, keep, keep your cards. Don't get it lost, damaged or mutilated. The country has to send so much to get you those cards and you, you, it's given to you free of charge. And uh, if you want to be replaced, we cannot just keep on continuing giving your cards free of charge. 
there should be some at least a small penalty charge uh, to, the, uh, to, uh, to serve as a deterrent from losing or damaging your cards. That's what I can tell you. Uh, the other one is on you. <clears throat> you are trying to correlate or relate two things: double registration uh, results, election results. These are two different things. We have a software where everybody, uh, whoever is registered, if you go back, you will be noticed. Whether you are even an IC staff or you are on training or you are on test, that shows you how robust the system is. Election results is the is the inputting of results from the field into the system. And we have noted your concern, and we can assure you, we have uh, provided different levels of checks, and checks both at the regional level and at the national level, that before we announce any result, it will be confirmed and affirmed by all of us, and uh, that will be the real, 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 and correct results. So thank you very much.
56 branches more of the Gambia. Huh? Ka. Gambia Kono and in Gambia Bantala Bangol. Unka Kono Kia Beret. Kodo Sifa Sifa for Falindiro for Nadi left a member of Kodito Koton in Kodimaro. Janum number one in Yonda. And Nun for another another enterprise is Sotali. Wall of Wallam Nindipo, Domoro Fanangol Fanande Fira de Dadi Man in Domoro Fanate Petiat. Gambia Dauda Yalom of Fakindol Sotali. Ha, what more? Ha, a parent of the left and yell and candle every night. Yale Bukani of Wall, Abarka, Yalan del Chosano, Abarka. We live in a day and age where technology is creating a world without borders, filled with unlimited potential to improve the lives of the people around us. InnovaRex Global Health ushers in a new way of leveling the playing field with increased access to quality healthcare services delivered at your doorstep. Our qualified professionals are equipped with state-of-the-art point-of-care testing technology to conduct tests such as kidney function, liver function, electrolyte tests, body composition, hemoglobin, A1C, and many more services with the highest efficiency in delivering results. The addition to our flagship Wellness on Wheels, more fondly known as WOW Delivery Service, brings the entire clinical experience full circle. IGH has remained committed to creating the future of healthcare delivery. Gone are the days of sending loved ones outside the country for basic medical services. Innovarex Global Health offers a new peace of mind and takes pride in delivering the quality of care we all deserve.